So for today's video, we have decided to do something a little bit different. And if you can see behind me, I've got one of them funny places that the water moves sideways on, which I swore I would never fish again. But joking aside though, today we've come to the Shropshire Union Canal at, where are we, Hinstock Wood, which is, it was actually one of my old places I used to come and fish. Probably 15 years ago, this is where we used to come and fish regular matches up here. And we've come just for a nice day out. Almost just to go through, just to see how things have changed. I mean, how I'd approach a canal, but don't get me wrong, this is non-technical. I'm the last person to profound to be good at this type of fishing. We're just gonna come and have a nice day's fishing. Try and catch some big bonus fish. So Adam's brought me to a lovely area that potentially holds some lovely big skimmers and perch and all them wonderful type fish we used to catch in years gone by. And yet that's all it's basically going to be, is, is looking at how I'd approach this sort of venue. And I want to compare it sort of to commercials these days, in the ways that you can feed, how the fish behave to feed, all that sort of thing. And ultimately, we just want to catch a load of fish. So we're going to get on the box, set up some of them very funny little light rigs, and see how we get on. So everything is sorted and we just want to have a babble about the peg and the bait and all that sort of thing as to say first thing I have to mention is just the location and how amazing it is where we is. Where we is, where we is, where we are. So we're at um, Hinstock Woods as I said, I'm parked, I'm parked closer than I am on most commercials. I mean I've walked 150 yards at the most, nice and accessible and I'm on a peg that I could potentially catch £30 on. which on a narrow canal is quite simply ridiculous. But I say I can't stress how excited they am to actually have it go. But with that in mind, because I'm sat on a really good peg, that's what we're gonna do. It's, it's all very positive. It's, it's skimmer fishing. You know what I mean, that's pretty much what we're going for. We're targeting great big skimmers, maybe the chance of a big stripey, which I'd really want. And the ultimate would be a big chub. I'd love to catch a big chub so much. I'd just I'd show off and send Andy May pictures and everything. But that's how we're gonna be. It, it's gonna be very much a, a positive way of fishing, catching lots of big fish or targeting lots of big fish. Whether we catch on them, them or not is the next thing. So rigs are done, I'll babble through them in a minute. So bait, really, really simple. It's cost me, I've bought a quarter of a kilo of worms and a pint of casters and I've got a few pinkies and worm eh, maggots left over from the commercial the other day. Probably cost me about four quid to come and fish here, which is, it's nothing for a mega, mega, mega day's fishing that you can bodge up nice and quick. I've got no kit barely compared to what I take on a commercial. It just makes everything nice and easy. I really do miss the days of, of doing this. So pretty much that's about it. Yeah, I'm gonna make things really nice and simple. I'm gonna target three areas to start with because we think it's gonna be so good. We're gonna pull a line down the middle, see if we catch some, weird, um, catch some big long eels or whatever else will perch down there. I'm gonna have a main line with ground bait and casters across and then another line with some worms and casters right in the shallow water for, that's gonna be my chub line. I am gonna catch a chub or at least gonna get smashed up by one or <laughs> the other I'd imagine happening. And yeah, that's about it. So we'll have a quick babble through rigs. I'll show you what I'm gonna do and then we'll put some bait in and catch some fish. Very, very quickly, we'll have a little rundown of my, I'm not gonna say rigs that are right for the job, but rigs that I have chosen to use on the day. And I'd say three areas that I'm gonna pick in the canal. One down the middle where it is really, really deep. So I think this area is very good because of the depth. You know, we've got a lot of cover, a lot of snags, a lot of fish holding features, which of course are, are really, really good for keeping the fish there, but it's the depth close to them features that are without a doubt gonna make it so good. But still, away from the features, that's where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start down the middle and I've got five foot, which is right deep for the Al Shropper, if, if I remember. And I've gone with a 414s wire stem, but very similar to like, sort of soft pellet, sort of stringing out shotting. I've got two number 10 droppers, three number 10 droppers, and then a bit of a spread bulk of number nines above it. It's so very, very similar to what I'd use on commercials, but it's gonna allow me to create a bit of a curve and cling onto, cling onto my bait as it goes through. I've got an 18 barb duck on, which I have not used the barb duck for probably about 15 years now. So I've got to make sure I don't stick that in my fingers. We've got a nice little um, size 18, so I'm going to fish maggots and casters on that one. Um, a relatively strong sort of, what, what are we going to call that? A medium gauge wire, just in case I've got to catch a few big perch or whatever else, or I might catch a nail. And I've got an eight elastic. So my rig, I've actually budged up a hook length for that one. So I've got 012 to 09. So relatively light, but still plenty enough to land any 
random fish that I'm going to hook down the middle where there's no snags. My next line, which is my main line, and I've brought one of my commercial silverfish floats for that, in that they're an old Gaz Malman one that he made me years ago at, uh, I think they're winter wire finesses, which is a wire stem, but with a, a glass, wire, wire stem with a glass bristle, which makes it stupidly sensitive that I reckon that's going to be perfect. But this is going to be my ground bait line that I'm going to feed at 11 metres, just close to the snags. Uh, I'm going to feed some ground bait with some casters, some pinkies, bit of everything in. And I'm just going to put that nice light one through it. So same again, 012 to, to 09, nice and positive. Bit of a lighter rook on that one. I've got a really light gauge 18 on that one again, just for, for proper bites. And that one's got a six elastic that's going to be lovely for catching their big skimmers with. And then finally, I've got the old dib dib dob dobber out. That this is definitely not what I usually use these for. They're actually my mugging floats. I use them a lot for mugging whenever I'm on snake lakes for finesse mugging. But in today's case, he's been bodged up with some 012 all the way through, and he's going to be my caster rig for a cross. And I've shot it a bit different, just with spread out number 12s all through my rig, just for a nice little light fall, which I think is going to be right, unless I've got a cling on, then I might have to change it. But that is going to be my caster rig for probably just casters, maybe a few worms on it as well right against my snags with a little bit heavy as I say 012 all the way through and that's about it Do you mean nothing fancy nothing technical involved just really positive nice rigs that are going to get the job done as long as there's some fish feeding there so without further ado I think it's time to put some bait in and unlike commercials that I've spent my life telling people not to throw bait in at the start I mean to, to fill your way in obviously with this it's got to be completely different these are natural wild fish that swim up and down you've got to congregate them in an area they're not going to be waiting for bait they're not going to be expecting to get fed so i've got to attract fish into my bag i've got to build my lines and make something happen and because i am sat on my own i'm going to have a lot of passing traffic lots of fish moving about so i've got to grab their attention that the fish could settle at at any time that are moving up and down the canal a bit different to a match where you you're penned in a bit and other anglers are taking your fish today i'm going to have a lot of fish moving in and out so i need my my trap set sort of thing, my, my table set, so then fish can come and feed. So what I'm going to feed, really simply, is I'm going to have three big ones across. One, two, three, and I'm going to have one big one down the middle. So that's going to be perfectly enough ground bait. I'll take a little bit off that. That's all going to go in at the start, on my lines, ready, mainly on my ground bait line at 11 metres. And the other line's going to be some casters that I pinked at across, but that's as simple as it gets. I'm going to put a few morsels in this, that hopefully make them skimmers settle over it, and that's about it. Should we know your name, or...? <laughs> <laughs> <It's good anyway. laughs> a quick one down middle now that I've built. Don't have this problem at Erinbrook. <laughs> Just that bad peg in at Erinbrook. So straight in, and I'm playing race the boat, which is something I've not had to do for many, many years. And we've got one coming, but I fed all my lines. I've put my ground bait in the far bank, or the my 11 meter one. I've cupped in a few casters um, at the back. I've not fed any worms at the back yet, just a few casters just to see and then I fed one ball over this but I put a second ball in as well after a boat had gone past so as soon as I fed there was a, a boat so we're just going to trundle over that and start before there's too many boats see if I can nick one down the middle because they've been bubbling there's been an odd fizz down the middle as if there's some fish some fish here so we'll give it a cast or two see if I can catch a quick one before this boat comes Well, I should have gone in with double maggot. I've just put single maggot on. I should have put two on. Definitely should have put two on. I'm going to hold this one over my bait quick before this boat gets here. Oh, it's going fast. And we've got dogs. And we've got chaos. So I've got about 30 seconds to up one before anyone gets here. <laughs> it's going to be perching in. I'm going animal. It's 
So after a bit of a chaotic start, I must say, I'm gonna swing this one, I'm gonna be wild. <laughs> With a few boats, as soon as I fed, a load of boats come, which I forgot about that. That's just how canals are, but it bothers us. It doesn't bother the fish. That's definitely the first key rule that I remembered. Um, and it was a bit scatty, but now they've settled. I mean, I've been on all my lines. I've had a quick go on over my ground bait line and caught some perch, just some nice little perch. I've been on my caster line at the back and caught some good gin. And I started down the middle, but I didn't catch any. But since then, I've been feeding it just with some loose fed casters, just as we would on, on a normal, <laughs> normal snake lake, chucking some down middle. And it's gone all right. I've had a nice gap in the boat. I probably had a 20 minute spell with no boat. And we're able to go down that middle with a nice little, that nice 414s rig, which fishes beautifully in that 5'4". And it's nice, we've had two two like pommy weirdy silver breamy things and then that one i think i was proper skimming them i wasn't i wasn't looking but there's definitely bites to be had so it's amazing even though you have them boats plowing over the top and all the mud comes up and it looks horrible oh that was a proper bite the mud looks horrible it's where they live they're happy it's this is their environment they're used to all the chaos of boats flying over all the time so that's where I'm going to spend my time now. I'm definitely going to catch as many as I can down the middle. See, they're definitely they're on them casters. I'm getting indications when I feed and all sorts. Um, but yes, I'm going to spend some time here, catch what I can here. And then I think rotating this with me, me ground bait line, that again, I'm going to feed casters over that. I'm not going down the little fish route of fishing pinkies and loose feeding pinkies or squats or anything like that. We're fishing ground bait with worms and casters in loose feeding casters over the top and then as I say this one's just going to be loose fed casters down the middle now I think I think that's the way to go there's definitely some fish there I don't know if my that was a proper fish then as well that was a, a netter I don't know if my rig's a little bit too positive for it so I've gone with like a, a soft pellet type rig a 414s it's one of our matrix prototypes but it's got a 1.5 mil bristling I think I wish because it is casters. I expect this to catch on worms and clinging on a little bit down there. But because it's not, because they seem to be intercepting me bait through the water, I do wish I had a a more delicate carbon stemmy, nicer float, a little bit more finesse to it. But we'll budget for now because obviously this is it's working enough. So what I've been shouted at already by Adam. Is not being positive enough. I've got to put some bait in. Another decent fish top down there then. Yeah, back, thinking back to my old days, it was two and three pound you were fishing for and you were feeding tiny, tiny amounts of ground bait and just ticking over catching the little diddy fish. So it's not about that, that there's plenty of fish to be caught, so why not give them some bait? So every time I feed, there's indications, things are happening. So the bait's definitely being eaten. We've got to regularly keep topping it up. What's that? That's something a bit stranger, maybe. Oh, always oh, getting bigger and bigger. I hope it's a perch. I really want a great big perch. It's going to be a hybrid, isn't it? That's actually very, very exciting. What is it? It is a hybrid or a skimmer, isn't it? Yes. What's that? It's more enjoyable than catching a calf because you've got right kit on. I promise I'm not going to use my puller bong, I promise. And he is a big skin bob, look at him. <laughs> oh, oh he's I forgot how minging they are though, Ad. Yeah, I forgot that, oh, he's... How good's that? Like, that's a bream, isn't it? What's he, two pound, two and a half pound? Proper big, sexy canal bream. Been a long, long time since I had one of them. But how easy is that? Just throw some casters. I'm thinking it's all technical and all, oh, put some worms in and some, it's not, just throw some casters. It? Fish eat bait when you throw it in properly, so. I'm gonna catch a few of them. So if we're catching some skimmers though, I'm going to change my feeding a little bit in that almost like you would on commercial, I'm going to feed a big amount and fish over top of it. Oh, here's my mate back. 
Hopefully he won't grab me pole and run off. <laughs> Hello. So you don't get any nice visitors like that on commercials either. Just don't stand on them. You don't want to stand on them, mate. <laughs> We're straight back in. And I can't believe how excited it is. I've genuinely had forgot, no exaggeration, just how excited it is hooking proper big old natural fish on. Do you mean really, really, really nice? Yes, another fish. They keep topping exactly the same place. So what we got? We've got some wires coming across. Just we're right on the border where we're allowed to fish. And the fish definitely know that in that gap, it's their little refuge sort of area. Keep chucking some casters. Just give them 10 casters sort of every other run through sort of thing, I think. That feels about right. So at the minute, I've got to work out where I get my bites on my feed as well, In that, To be fair, it's pulling through quite a bit, so we've got a, what's it called? It's a downstream wind, I suppose, isn't it? It's going with the flow. Or with the, the toe on a canal, isn't it? It's not the flow. But it's whether my, my bites are coming at the back of me bait, where I'm sat now, where I caught that skimmer last time, or whether I'm better off, I don't know if that went then, or it's a bit funny whether I'm better off being right within me feed. So it's lovely, so I'm keeping me other lines topped up as well, just pinging an odd caster over the top of them, just so I've got somewhere to go if a, if a boat appears or anything like that. So that's that. Right over me feed it seems to be. Slightly different fish over the bait. Like smaller fish, but not still not tiny, still well worth catching. Ooh -hoo. And then a potential big monster at the back. So they're proper skimmers, them as well. Like little fat adderupperers. Can't believe how keen and excited they are to catch fish like that. Normally they're vermin that I'd be like, what am I doing? I've got to come off that line, put big pellet on. This is it's just, I miss this. I really, really do. If you guarantee me drawing a peg like this, I'd come back to canals every week. I probably would draw pegs like this. <laughs> so I'll carry on with this, catch me little spells of this. This will last as long as the boats allow, I'd imagine. I'll be able to keep catching what I can on this. But as soon as the boats come a problem, we've got bases covered to move across to that, to that far bank where, because we've got the depth as well. So picking a peg that has got some depth on the far bank, that's going to be mega for if it gets busy later and the fish want to go over there because there's too many boats driving over them. Yeah, boy. Oh. What's that? That's going to be a hybrid foul up, though. Is it in Gov or... That foul looked on it. I was all a very <laughs> yeah, proper in wing. What we got? What we got wrong thing. I thought that was going to be something different then, it was wiggling a bit. Like, this is better than some commercials I fish in winter for silver fishing. Look at him. Year one. That's two proper ones now, but even the, the smaller fish we're catching must be like eight, ten ounce a piece. Or some of them anyway. Old school. Never used to catch this many when I used fish at canals. Ever. Very smelly. How good's that? I mean, I caught that on 10 peas worth of casters on a canal. But makes it feel like it's, it's just better, isn't it? If you catch one of them on commercial with commercial kit, it's just like, oh, right, yeah. Got a snotty skimmer. Whereas this is like, what have I got on the end? It's. Definitely, the magic is, that's what's missing, isn't it? I'm gonna go controversial and diss what I do. 
in that that's the issue with commercials. It's the unknown magic that's missing that you have on these sorts of places. I mean, you can't have Bob the Bailiff's not telling you about Fred the 30 pound carp, is it? It's who knows what's going on. Best, I want to catch something weird though as well. I don't want to catch an eel or a big perch. Love a chub. I'm going to fish for a chub in a bit. That's today's plan. Get boated out on this one and then go over there and catch something big and monstrous. So the boat traffic has got a bit lively. And as a result, the middle line's gone right weird, which is as expected. So what we're going to do, I'm going to put some neat worms and casters on me, on me dibbery castery type line and hope for a bonus fish on that. Because I still want to catch me big chub. Because I can see a boat coming, so it's worth feeding. I can feed right in that shallow water and further across, just because it doesn't disturb it too much. And while I'm doing that, what I'm going to do is have a quick look on my 11 metre line. I'm not going to feed it again, because I want to see what fish have settled over that because that shouldn't have been disturbed too much and because I've introduced quite a volume I'd expect this to still be quite a or a little bit of bait over there and then what I'm waiting for is this boat to do one and then in a little gap as long as I can't see a boat I'm going to feed that middle line again and say it just needs something to tighten the fish up again the loose feed casters is is great for catching them when they're there but I think they need a little bit of ground bait just to home him in a little bit, just to draw him back into the peg, because it, so there has been a lot of boats in the last 10 minutes. So in the meantime, we're just gonna have a quick go on this. Again, with caster on the hook, because I've been pinging an odd caster over there. So I'm gonna go in with a caster. And just see, and we've nailed him, look at that! He's very lively, him. So there's that probably what's happened in it just a few boats have come and they've just edged over the canal a little bit oh I don't know if that foul looked or not then it's very very erratic not like hooking an f1 in the tail that right I'm gonna wait for this boat to go just gonna sort this out my hook looks terrible it's got a big dodgy tag end sticking off it so that needs neatening up We'll see, so even in that this boat's ploughing through, I'm going to go straight in on this line with, with a caster and see if they're there. Because I think it's, we worry too much about our bait being moved when the boats go past. Hey, old pal. So we're going to go straight in, even though it's rocking about a bit. That is, that is moving a little bit, that to be fair. He's been ploughing through him. Would he get sheltered at in a canal match? He'd have been, he'd have been sheltered the... I do want to shout at a boater a little bit, but I won't. In the name of professionalism, I'll not shout at the people on boats. Right, let's have a look. Just wait for the canal to back up and go the right way for a sec. As soon as it does... I'm going to start loose feeding a few casters over that. So I've just fed that chop way in. What I don't want to do is give it too longer before I go on it. Because if there's a big fish there, it'll eat it all. So I want to go on that very, very quickly. So I'm just going to have a quick go on this for, for two minutes. And then I'm going to go straight over that worm with a, a piece of worm on the hook. So as soon as the canal stops as well, I do want to feed a, something down the middle, a ball down the middle. An indication. It's still there, isn't it? It's crazy. That bait must be all over the place, but they're still on it, and it's different fish this time as well. It's not little, little tiny perch in that. It's silverfish. So that obviously that line's got a lot better while we've not been on it. So it's no different to commercials. You've just got to have the the options of rotation to to change when the fish change because of whatever else because of time of day, because of boat, because of you've messed it up, whatever. If 
few casters. Far too lively with them casters. Just dodged a bit. That's going to go in with a bream ad. You ready? Straight in, bream on the end. It's happening. A canal's a new venue every single time you go to it because. To make every like little area is different, isn't it? It's like a million different venues within one. I told you I'm gonna look a bream. Oh, right. So after messing that monumentally up, I'm gonna feed down the middle, and I'm gonna feed on that, and I'm gonna go on. Give me worms and catch one. So that down the middle, just one nice little neat ball, not too big. Just a golf ball we're going to give him because there's lots and lots of fishies here with a few casters. And I'm going to give him exactly the same on. Where are we? There. I'm going to give him exactly the same on that 11 meter one as well. Just another little tightening up ball that will hone them in a little bit. Mom, big pinch of casters. Hopefully we'll be able to go on that and catch one quick once I've caught me four pound chub on worms. So in my boaty gap, I've got my other two lines fed, and hopefully now I'll have enough time for them to settle on that middle line again before another boat comes. But say in the meantime, I've gone over to me my shallowest line sort of where I've just fed some worms. So I'm gonna catch a couple of quick ones on this. And then I've got to make the choice of whether to go on to me my ground bait line across or that one down the middle again. I think the one across is probably gonna be the most productive at the minute. So I'll have a quick go on this, decide that there's no big fish there. And I'll come off it and I'll go on that, on my ground bait line with casters next. So it's lovely having pretty much three options with lots of bites on each. Oh, that's on. Oh, that's off again. I'm going to be lazy and go straight in. Very lazy, definitely masking me up or something, but see if I can get away with it. Just drop him in. That locked the bell. I thought that was going to be a bit bigger then. But anyway, no. Another little perch. I'm going to come off that. Because at the minute I think it's full of little fish. And I'm going to go on to my other one just to, to make the most of that feed that I've just put in. See, they're still not tiny. They're still worth catching, aren't they? Easy going to catch a pound an hour at least. Some casters down the middle. I'm going on that one. So right over the top of where I've just fed that. That ball of ground bait with a load of casters in. A bigger fish on that. Let's touch the leaves. So it, it is a bit nicer in the fact that with them being natural fish, they don't see a lot of bait. So it's unlike a commercial where you often feel that there's loads of fish in your peg and can't catch them on a canal or somewhere like that, it doesn't feel like you have that problem because the, the hungry fish, they don't come across piles of ground bait and casters very often. So if there's fish in your peg, you tend to catch them quite quick. You can understand where they are very fast by the response you get. So instead of 
having bubbles on a commercial and you can't get bites, that's never going to be a problem here. It's working out where they are at what time and making sure you feed in the right way to catch them. Little fish over there as well. I don't know what to do with that line, whether to be really, really aggressive. It's just some roach. Little roach. Yeah, be really, really aggressive and start rafting casters in or feeding heavy or not. I don't know whether it's too risky, but I'll try this for another 10 minutes. See if I catch a bonus fish. And if not, I am definitely going to loose feed some casters because it's working ever so well down the middle. It's just loose feeding some bait, feeding 10 every 10 minutes or so. And there's no reason that won't work across if, if there's enough fish present. Maybe I'm just being a little bit too negative to catch the bigger fish and it's, they're just hanging off a bit. We shall see. But still, it is brilliant. I reckon I've had a bite every single cast from start to finish so far, pretty much. Other than when the boats have upset things a little, my float has still gone under every single cast wherever I put it. Well, really, really quick one, because I don't want these to be out the water for too long, but that's just like ridiculous. I can only say that in the years that I fished canals back in Z day, I think I caught 10 pounds twice, which is it's just an absolute joke. I mean, we fished for two and a half hours here, three hours probably, and I reckon we got 14, 15 pound on, do you know what I mean? 150 yards down a canal on three quid's worth of bait. Do you know what I mean? Even I can do it. I haven't done this for 15 years and there's so many fish to be caught. It's, I mean, it does not get more pleasurable than that. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. It's probably the least technical video we've ever done, but probably the most enjoyable on my part. So thank you very much. If you enjoyed what you've watched, then please feel free to like and subscribe or to join the Club Matrix page where you get to see all of our content from myself and all of the other major consultants. But for me and for all of these, thank you very much and we'll see you all very soon.